everyone, it's Daphne, and we are working on page seven. And page seven comes from the eight by eight pack, and I split it right here where the line naturally lies. This is gonna be the top, and this is gonna be the bottom where the pocket is. And our pocket is three, let me double check, three and a quarter, three and a quarter by nine. Three and a quarter by nine. You're gonna score a half inch on three sides to create the pocket. It's gonna go on the bottom. <clears throat> Again, we're on page seven. not going to work. I'm too far to the right. So I'm going to use my spatula to lift the tape because I haven't burnished it. I'm hoping I can lift it without too much trouble. It's a little bit of marring, but it's gonna be covered by the pocket, so I'm not really worried about it. And I don't have to wait for my undo to dry. So there we go. I was just a little too far to the right, so I just straightened it out. And now it looks perfect. Okay, if you don't have one of these, get one. It's a palette knife that you're gonna find in uh, the paint section, it's really thin. I need to clean mine because it has adhesive on it. And it'll slide underneath your tape and it'll save you so much time. Now, also try to find a, as thin as possible um, a palette knife that's plastic. So when you follow along with me and I make a mistake and I have to reinsert a magnet, um, these work great for opening it, but trying to place the magnet, you need something that's not magnetic. So when I go in with a magnet, it wants to follow this palette back out. So I have this and I have a plastic one, which I don't have handy to show you or demonstrate, but I also got it in the paint section. We don't sell either one. It's just a tool you need if you're a scrapbooker or a mini album maker. Okay, let's go ahead and cover the pocket. If I didn't have that, I'd spend a lot more money on undo. <laughs> I only use undo if I have burnished the tape. If I haven't burnished the tape, I use my palette knife. And 99% of the time it comes up. The other key to pulling something up that has tape on it is not to pull it straight up, but to pull it at an angle. Um, and it helps release the tape. I don't understand why it works that way, but it does. Almost all the time that I try to go straight up, it tears the paper it's laying on. Okay, there we go. Then this is gonna be the backdrop to the page, which I love. I really, worked hard to make sure that I could make this page because I think this looks so good. It's a it's perfect for a pocket page. Um, this base of the page is all from the 8x8 eight eight pack. The inserts are going to come from the backgrounds and from the 12x12 12 12, so it's a it's a combination. I have a cup of water here sitting with me on the desk. And I see it got a hold of my paper here. I don't have a coaster in here for some reason. But I'm okay with that because it's just going to look like I um, distressed the edge. Okay, there we go. So this is a cut apart 
from the, either the 12 by 12 backgrounds or the 12 by 12 collection pack that's gonna go in here. But the really fun thing is going to be this, which is a little booklet and inside the booklet, we're gonna have a waterfall. So this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack, the squares. It's gonna go on the cover. And I'll have to tell you what the cover is. Just a minute. It's the same as uh, page, sorry, page six. Um, it's eight. Eight and three eighths by six, eight and three eighths by six, and you're gonna score at four and one eighth and four and a quarter. And you're gonna have a little gusset in between. And you're gonna need that because we're gonna put a waterfall on this side and it's gonna be quite bulky. This is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. This is from the 12 by 12 collection pack as well. Okay, we're gonna come down a half inch from the top and I'm gonna make a reference line. Half inch from the top of the black cardstock, not from the designer paper. And there's an eighth inch difference and that's why I'm pointing it out. That's the reference line for the first waterfall. We have four waterfalls. They are four inches across and they are four and a half inches tall. Four by four and a half. You're gonna score a half inch on the four inch side. Uh, half inch on the four and a half inch side, sorry. So you're gonna have a finished four by four panel. Okay, take your time putting the first one in because it's the guide for the following. Okay, now I'm just gonna place this hinge right next to this. And like I said, the first one's the guide for every subsequent one. <clears throat> I had a gravelly voice, I don't know why. Maybe it's just dry. Yikes. No. Sorry, I know you guys are getting a lot of the top on my head. I apologize. But it's hard to line up without being directly over it. Just tugged it off this way, and that's why it didn't tear my paper. Also, because I hadn't burnished it yet, so. Yep, 
If you burnish your tape, don't even try to lift it. Just go for your undo. There we go. So that's not as perfect as I'd like it. <clears throat> Normally I'd have a nice even line down here. It was really struggling. <laughs> but it's still gonna close nicely. And pretty much nobody's gonna notice but you and me. Okay, let's cover those flaps. So we did a four, a total of four waterfall flaps. And we're gonna use this as our cover, because it's fun. And from my perspective, this would be the flap you don't decorate. This is just uh, something interesting to look at. I'm trying to decide how I want it oriented. And then everything front, back, from here down would be photo mats, if that makes sense. So this would be the decorative piece. And then from here on out would be photo mats. And these are ideal for three by threes. Oops, I skipped a page, which I didn't mean to do. Okay, looks good. Now, of course, you could choose either side, but I'm using the simple side, so it's much easier for anybody looking at it to figure out that this is where a photo goes. You don't have to choose between the image and placing a photo. And that is why I always want to have a statement piece on the top. It helps. Oh, sorry. I thought I had ink these. I guess I didn't. <laughs> That is absolutely gonna make me mad. At some point, I might actually use undo to lift these and straighten that out. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be a distraction for me. Maybe not everybody, but <laughs> I can't live with that. That's one of the reasons I have a hard time with pre-made albums, because that's pretty standard. Uh, everything is off just slightly, and I keeps me up at night. <laughs> Yes, it's true, I'm the crazy paper lady. 
So I'm going to do that off camera, but I am going to straighten it. And you can see me struggling with it uh, to get from the get-go, right? All right. <clears throat> so by and large, it is working the way it's supposed to. This is the rest of it. And I'm going to pull in page six so you can see that is what it should be, you know, from side to side. That's what it should be, <laughs> very minuscule. This is what wound up on, page, on the second one. Yep, so that's too far off for me, so I'm gonna fix that, but like I said, I'm gonna do that on my own time. Yeah, that's gonna drive me to distraction. <laughs> But there we go, there's page six, here's page seven. And I think uh, it's it's kind of a simple page, but I really think this is what makes the page is the insert and the little booklet. So there's plenty of room for additional inserts, but um, these two, page six, page seven. So what's left, page eight. We'll be back soon to finish up the album.